fire on a police car in an execution style ambush. Shots fired! Get those screws! I'm shot! I'm bleeding heavily! All cars stand by. We have an officer shot. Can assist the officer. Six zero three. So we have an officer down. That was Officer Hartnett shouting on his police radio right after a gunman fired 13 shots at him while he was in the vehicle. Bravely, Officer Hartnett did, did manage to get out of his car and fire back and wounding the suspect. The suspect was later apprehended by other officers when he attempted to flee, flee the scene. The gunman, Edward Archer, confessed to the authorities. In fact, take a listen to this. The suspect in question it's a 30 year old male from Yaden. He has a Philadelphia address as well, I believe. He's commit, has confessed to committing this cowardly act in the name of Islam. According to him, he believed that the police defend laws that are contrary to the teachings of the Quran. Joining me now, Jillian Melcher, Bo Deedle, Steve Rogers, and Ebony Williams. Bo, I got to go to you first. Another officer, another attempted ex execution of one of our, uh, one of our uh, you know, police officers, but. Uh, the special twist here again that ISIS now, we're seeing them all over this country, and they're pretty bold now. You know, first of all, my heart and soul goes out to that officer Absolutely. and their family. Hope for his quick recovery, and he truly is a hero. After being shot three times, he got out of the car and was able to fire his weapon. And to me, that's a hero cop taking action right there. Now, with this said, this is not ISIS. This is not one country. This is not Al-Qaeda. This is radical Islam. This is a lone wolf who has done it, and he mentioned under the name of Allah, he's shooting at this cop, killing this cop under the name of Allah. This is what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with direct countries, and this doesn't have to be ISIS. This is the mentality of radical Islam, and it's about time that this president and everyone says exactly what it is. This guy was killing that cop under the name of Allah. He, was, he attempted to kill the cop, to your point, brave uh, police officer was struck three times. He's alive. He even got out of the car to wound this guy. Uh, uh, and uh, again, we know it's radical Islam and, and it's inspired. I guess, Jillian, this is one of the problems that we have with this because there's the organization, there are the sleeper cells, and then there are these so-called lone wolves. But even the lone wolves have to be inspired somehow. That's right. And I think the Islamic State in particular has been very savvy in its social media outreach. There's been a lot of indication that they are, in fact, seeking out and looking for people who are like this guy, who have potential mental illness, um, who are the school shooter type, uh, who are the lone wolf type. And they've basically given a blanket invitation, do violence in the name of Allah. And I think that's what we're seeing. That's going to be a very difficult thing for law enforcement to combat. Ebony, would you say it's also an invitation when, within a nanosecond, the mayor blames guns? Uh, when they reach out to his mother, she blames a football injury. Uh, again, it's one thing to say that the enemy is, is call it out, radical Islam. Right. They're coming after us. We know what their intentions are. But when these individuals commit these kind of crimes, when the knee-jerk reaction by the left is to say, oh, no, it was a gun, more gun violence, mm -hmm. that actually makes it harder for us to solve this. Well, I certainly think that is narrowing in on, in the wrong way. We've got to look at this as a broad thing. Julian's right. This is a criminal profile at play here. And it is nothing wrong with us looking at this. There are patterns here. Bo's right. We're seeing outliers. We're seeing individuals being inspired with these propaganda mechanisms. And let's come up with an effective criminal profile to target this before these officers and other civilians are being injured. Steve, last year, 2015 set a new record for terror plots in America. 13 Islamist-inspired attacks and plots were uncovered last year. Uh, that's significantly more than any year before that, and it feels like uh, this could be a year where they go for a whole lot more. Charles, we've said quite often on this show that the war is coming here, that the battle is not going to be fought overseas, it's going to be fought on our streets. What we saw happen in Philadelphia was a direct attack on a sovereign United States government. Whether he was connected to ISIS or not, we'll find out later. But it was a terrorist attack. And by the way, he's a career criminal, Bo, and we know that every time we put these individuals, all right, behind bars, what do the judges do? They put them back out on the streets to do what? To shoot cops. And that's a fantastic point. I mean, looking into this guy's history, in 2012, he had a charge where it was a gun assault. Um, he was charged with making terroristic threats. He ended up pleading down. Uh, somehow, with the terroristic threat component, we and didn't know about, that he was about to do And this. how about this? Trying these terrorists as enemy combatants. Yeah, I They're mean, not criminals. They're enemy combatants. We, we have to face one thing, Charles. By 2040, it's estimate that half of the world is going to be Muslim. We got to get the moderate Muslims to realize that the West and the United States is not their enemy, and we want to help them. We must 
psychologically get them to come on board because we can't be fighting half the world and radicalize all the but good doesn't that begin Muslims. at the White House? Yes, yeah, exactly. President no, of the United leadership. States no, no, no. has a clear I leadership. I agree with that, Steve. I think it begins in communities. I think that is the real problem here. We've got such a breakdown of communities, and this is why people are these isolationists, and it's inexcusable, and, and we're paying the price. What, but, but when you say it begins in the community, where, like, would it begin in a mosque or something like no, that? No, I'm talking about, uh, uh, in a larger sense, Charles, I'm talking about, like both saying, reaching out to our moderate Muslim neighbors and people in schools. I, you know, this is what I, I'm talking about. That assertiveness also has it's something to do with it, though, because, you know, reporting from Croatia, one of the most encouraging things I saw dealing with refugees was Croatian Roma Christians reaching out saying we're confident enough that we want to get involved in this but community. Julie, the we president want to westernize won't and make clearly a define what this yeah, is. Yeah, but you know what's important? What's important? How do we fix it? Right. The most important thing is instead of us spending tens of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars militarily, we have to let the people of the Middle East, the moderate Muslims, realize we want to help them. We want to build schools. Well, hold on one second. Wait, where we've is that? that though. We want to help. Second, look, 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 look at the men we lost. We've, we've, done, we've done that. We've done that, yes. I think, Bo. We have to continue. To do it to we've change spent the trillions minds. of dollars around the world. We've saved the planet on more than one occasion. We have been the world's policemen. We lost a lot of people in Afghanistan and Iraq. In fact, we continue to lose men and women there. So why is it the onus on America, Bo? Rather than if you're <laughs> if you're a moderate Muslim living in America right now and you see the direction that things are going into, what's the onus on you? The only problem I have is the people, the Palestinians, the people over there are in such poverty, and all they're doing, they're preaching. Where did religion come from? Religion came from poor people well, why, believing why is in that something. Our problem? No, it's I'll not our you problem. Why, you know why should more problem? Americans die? Why should here. Americans blood it's it's coming coming here. Here. I think a lot of what we're seeing here. right now. Hold on I think, a second. Okay. Go ahead. I think a lot of what we're seeing right now is that U.S. withdrawal from international affairs has created a vacuum. The Islamic State has filled that, and I think we're seeing an explosion of, of jihad as a result. I'm not talking about military. Yeah. I'm talking about these kids that have yes. no food, no education. Hey, damn it! I want to be. I want to be an ambassador. They'll change their idea about America. No, America no, doesn't no, hate no, everyone. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll present this to you, Ebony. Sure. With respect to what you're saying, Bo, we've seen a lot of attacks in this country by Muslims who were born in this country or who came here mm. at a very young age, and they got that love that you're talking I about. Gotta, they got the baby ass. shower. They got the wedding What gifts. do we do? They got the education. And you know what? They hop in a, in a convertible and they shoot up a recruiting center. They go down to their workplace and they kill their fellow workers. So, uh, you know, how, Charles, much what's the the answer, Charles? how much of the illness is on that? What is the answer, Ebony? I see what you're saying. You're saying that at some point, when is enough enough on our part? No, no, but we're paying some kind the of, ultimate there's some price. Sort of there's some sort of animosity toward America, America, whether they live over there and often or even when they are born here. and raised here. I hear you. I'm not disputing that. You're absolutely right, Charles. But again, ultimately, we can talk, play the blame game. I'm just not interested in it. I'm just interested in a solution and a fix. Well, are you ready for the solution and fix? Because, Steve, yeah. I think you would think it's pretty... You, you think the solution is pretty harsh. It's got to be harsh. It's got to be harsh. But the fact of the matter is, Charles, I'm trying to say, in Afghanistan, they don't want us there. The Iraqi government kicked us out. None of these countries want us there. Look, I get it. I get it. I've been in naval intelligence. I understand foreign policy. But when you're not welcome in somebody's home, why should more Americans die? Domestically, though, what do you think the solution should be? Right here in the United yes. States? Well, look, just like what's happening in Germany now, and in these countries taking a lot of these refugees in who are breaking the law, who are, who are causing riots, put them in jail. The, the solution, keep them in the Mideast. Get that safe haven. There's where you can use your military. Guard them. But the only problem is it's coming to our shores. We have 8 million Muslims, Americans. Yeah. 8 million. So, again, uh, you know, you're not, what, what, do, what do we do with uh, 8 million yeah, people who, who, for the most part, overwhelmingly are living here peacefully? Right. However, however, this, it, this radicalization process is growing. It's attracting more of them, particularly young ones, and something is going to get but very ugly. We need to ugly. protect those American Muslims that live knees. here. We, we need, need to, to cut protect it off at the them. knees, though. I don't want to see that growing like a cancer, and, and that right. certainly has the potential to happen. It's one of the most important thing in our country right now that our country's facing is the terrorist threat. We have to get these imams, we have to get the Muslim people together and get the moderate Muslims to start to preach that we're all, we, we're America, we but love each other. Say before, it begins itself. with leadership. I know, I'm, a, I'm an ex detective. I'm supposed to be the hard guy, kill everybody. No. <laughs> No, I want to educate those kids to love this country like I love this country. America is for American Muslims the same as it was for my mother who was born in Italy, my father was born in Germany. This is their country. They got to understand. They got to make this country. We got to live together. Is that called assimilation? 
you're talking it's about the spirit of inclusion and, yes. and what we can call an assimilation, I do think it can be effective. To Charles's point, we've seen episodes where it hasn't been, but I don't think that's enough to give up on the topic. But we have 330 my, million people in this country with the, am the amount of incidents. It's so minute right. compared to the 8 million Muslims that right. are here. Right. So all Muslims are not hating this no, country. Sure and no, they are Muslims. Thing, though, guys, I hate to call Muslim. They're Americans. Right. But the, here's the problem, though, guys. It doesn't have to be a lot when it's horrific. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and when, you, when you kill the scene we saw in San Bernardino, yep. we saw in Paris, yeah. uh, an assassination attempt on a police officer. Yes. You don't need a lot of those yeah. to really, really make every American feel afraid. I can guarantee you tonight, people in Philadelphia are a lot more afraid than they were. To Islamophobia, the fear of Islam. Well, let's keep in mind, Charles, you got to protect Muslims who are Americans here, law abiding. Let's leave it right there. We'll, all, we'll also say, really, see something, say something, because Absolutely. every one of these guys has shown it's some profile. kind of sign before. Yep. Right. By the way, guys, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be. A I want to know something. My thing is for, <laughs> and my NRA guys are going to scream and yell at me, but I'm for background. I'm for people on the no-fly zone not to be able to buy guns, but I'm also for people learning how to use the gun, training, and that should be part of it. If the president wants to say something progressive, you should at least shoot twice a year if you have a gun license so you know what the hell you're doing. Because I tell you right now, good, strong NRA gun owners, if they showed up when that cop was getting shot at by that Muslim uh, a radical, they would have opened up on him and maybe he could have helped that cop also. So gun owners right. are good in America. We have over 300 million guns, and they're good people that are gun owners, and I support them. Hey, here's the thing. Um, uh, in, last night, President Obama, I'm pretty sure everyone saw at least part of it, had his town hall, and, and, and Taya Kyle, uh, Chris Kyle's uh, widow, actually had an opportunity to, to speak to him. I want to just take a listen to what she had to say because it's really, it's really important. The thing is that the laws that we create don't stop these horrific things from happening, right? And that's a very tough pill to swallow. Right. We want to think that we can make a law and people will follow it. But by the very nature of their crime, they're not following it. By the very nature of, of looking at the people who hurt our loved ones here, I don't know that any of them would have been stopped by the background check. All right, well, obviously, this uh, shooter in Philadelphia, I, we don't know how he got his stolen. gun, but it was a stolen gun. Uh, obviously, he wouldn't have gone through any of these background checks no matter what. So that underscores the point she was making. Yes, and, and it's not about guns. It was never about guns. It's about light sentences. It's about leniency on career criminals. It's about releasing these animals back out on the street to kill innocent people. Look at what's happening in Chicago. Look what's happening in a lot of cities. The gangs, the bad guys had the guns, yeah. not the good if guys. If he should have done, like I but, said many times, executive but, order, ATF, the FBI, let's go after these gangs but, that are killing the As, as Bo said, arm the good guys. And you're right, Bo. There should be reasonable background checks. There should be reasonable type yeah. regulations. Well, but I the disagree. Second Amendment Look, the NRA strong. is right. We need a militia right now. And I know that sounds yeah, well, extreme, but guess what? Well, you know what? I'm I don't know. These that. Muslims that aren't coming in. I'm not from I'm sorry, the extremists. And people are scared now. Americans want to be able to buy their guns. Do you, they, do you, do you worry? Is... It's one thing that for everyone to be strapped, and if something goes down, we can all participate and try to bring the bad guy down. But would the militia be too much of an offensive thing? Would we actually create more problems than we, than we would solve? I don't solve? think so. I think Americans want to be able to defend themselves. I mean, look, we have cops now being shot up by a Muslim extremist. Yeah, we but know when, when, why he was shot. We got we to leave so, it there, you know, Steve. So, oh. you know, Americans should be able to have guns, and, um, you know, the Second Amendment right is, needs to be strong. All right. We're going to talk about this a lot more of course i've also got breaking news who uh, yeah. over the years they have come to live with horrific incidents so that a day i think today two or three uh israelis were killed murdered maybe stabbed to death i remember the buses right. that were blowing up every day i know america doesn't want to become that nation but can we stop it well, thankfully, Charles, we have two oceans and we're not surrounded by a bunch of angry neighbors. But just real quick, I remember in the 1970s when I came back from Vietnam, I came back to a safe country. Now soldiers come back from the Middle East or, God forbid, officers go out on the beat uh, and they have to worry not only about their own lives but about the lives of their family. No, this is, this is something that has to be addressed and contained. You cannot let this bow wave of ISIS uh, nuttiness uh, grow in this country because we're not a country, I believe we're not a country that can really deal with it. And yes, Steve Rogers, um, would the solution be to become isolationist? Let's not only put up a wall on the southern border, but put it on the northern border. Uh, you know, let's not just do 45% tariffs. How about 100% tariffs? How about kicking everyone out the country? I mean, do we want to be that country? 
Is that too dramatic? Uh, and if it's not, then what is the solution? Well, well, the solution is to be smart, to make sure that you have uh, a comprehensive... But don't we feel smart already? We're what are we doing not wrong right now? Well, well, we're letting everybody in right now. Uh, that's what we're doing. And, and, and the other change, you talked about uh, the way of life changing here. We have to see policing methodologies change. What I saw in that video was one man in a patrol car. You've got to go to two men patrol cars, give them the firepower, give them the equipment. That's how we make change. Protect Is, the people. Islamophobia. Let's stop being politically correct. If you see something, you call up. You see four uh, Arab-looking guys in a 7-Eleven at 3 o'clock in the morning bringing boxes of stuff in there that doesn't look right. Pick up the phone, call. And Forget about polybius. All right, guys, yeah. got to leave it there. Great stuff as usual.